Oh, sorry, it was Wayne's world. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so we went Wayne, Wayne's world on over to our first review. We're going to be talking a little bit about some of our favorite parts of this book. This has been Richten's Guide to Ravenloft from A Wizards yeah. of the Coast. It came out uh, two weeks ago. We took last week off, so we weren't able to talk about it, but we could talk about it now. All uh, right. I I have to say, like, after the last book, I am so happy to have this book in my hands. Um, <laughs> yeah. Candle keep candle candle keep was fine, but it wasn't it wasn't as engaging as this one. This one, well, I'm 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 so into. Uh, there's character options. There's great tools for DMs. There's some fantastic maps in here. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 gorgeous. Um, we last year in October when we were uh, you know in the beta phase of this show when we were we were trying to figure out what we were doing we did a we did a whole section talking about different types of horror. And one of the yeah. sections in this book is very close to, you know, sim being similar to what we were talking about in that, you know, talking about body horror, talking about cosmic horror, uh, you know, the different types of horror to to throw at your players uh, to, to kind of interact, you know, and, and, and play the game. So, yeah, and it talks about all that in here and it does a really great job. Uh, the, all the different. It, I'm going to bramble. Uh, Rich, <laughs> just 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 pick a topic and go because. I will just keep jumping all over the place going, oh my God, well, there's this, there's this. I mean, right, there is all that in here. It's so good. I love this book because, you know, like you mentioned, Candlekeep Chronicle or uh, Candlekeep Mysteries, there we go, is a book where if you have all these mysteries, these adventures set for you, it's a series of one shots, right? Yeah. This is like mm -hmm. a homebrewer's playground is this book, you know, which I love as a DM. Um, I have so many different ideas in here that I can use to just like spark uh, me for like my own one shots or my own little work worlds mm -hmm. um this this game does or this book does such a good idea of allowing you to give a little bit of horror to your game you know you could design a ton if you want to the worlds in here and we'll check in on a couple of them are pretty exciting but if you just want like your players to like step around a corner enter the mists and be in one of the domains of dread for like a couple sessions this book is perfect for giving you the flavor for that um and that makes me really yeah. happy um so yeah um, i look, we, I look yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say, I, I, you know, I mean, blah, right? Uh, one of the things that I just really love in 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 books are tools to reward players, as mm -hmm. opposed to you know just normal things like magic items or gold or whatever. Like tools to reward players, and yeah. and the one one of the things that just stood out so much to me are the dark gifts. Uh, you can make deals with sure. some of these people that you meet in these mists, and it's a fun way to give your players like some power, but at a cost. But it's it's not like a some of them have a little bit of a mechanical cost, but the mechanical cost isn't so bad that it detracts from the fun of the power and the role-playing mm -hmm. opportunities around it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so good. These are really good. I like this. Um, especially, you know, I've used these as your character dies and is coming back and someone talks to you during that, allowing you, you know, raise dead-ish, or, you know, if you fail that last death save, then maybe this bargain happens. But mm -hmm. I like that there are other moments in here that they're called out, like... Um, just, you know, they show up and want to make a deal or you are suffering a curse or you've broken a vow and you get one of these dark gifts because of it. Um, I just think it's fun. It's a really great rule set. Or you're just or you're just having a bad day, you know, yeah. uh, you know, Dark Lord shows up and is like, hey, <laughs> it, 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 it rained on your wedding day. It, uh, uh -huh. you know, there is 10,000 forks when all you needed was a knife. Um, oh, gosh. You know, you know, when whole... I, those situations. <laughs> Those situations are are the times when that dark gift is really tempting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I will tell you one thing I am excited about as well, which is that this book has an official investigator background. Um, and, yes. you know, looking through it, you get to focus on your first case. You get a badge that will let you in because you are a member of an official inquiry, which is, I mean, after writing a, a book on investigations, um, something that I want. I wanted this background. I'm glad it's here. I'm glad it's creepy. And I'm glad it comes with a list of 100 brand new horror trinkets um, that are all Spe every single speaking one. Of is your a book on, yeah. <laughs> speaking of your, 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 your book on, on investigations, uh, what was that book called and where can folks find it? Oh, that was Empyrean Investigations. You can grab that on Drive Through RPG. Um, it's got a lot of stuff, not quite <laughs> as horrific as this book, um, but uh, right. mysteries for sure. 
Yeah. Um, oh, man. Oh, gosh. Uh, subclass options are things that we have seen before in Unearthed Arcana. We've got the Bard College of Spirits and the Undead Warlock. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad to see them here. And they've also reprinted, I th reprinted, updated the Haunted One um, mm -hmm. background as well. Better. Yeah. Better. Uh, yeah. They or, or sorry. I was thinking about the... Um, uh, they're not calling them races. They're calling them... Oh man, my Lineage. brain. My lineages. Brain. Lineages. There we go. <laughs> I love the I love the I love the lineages in here. Um, mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, I've already talked a little bit about the hex blood. Uh, uh, so the hex blood is pretty fantastic. That's somebody who has had some interactions with a witch, uh, yeah. or a or a um, uh, a hag of hag. some sort, and has made mm -hmm. some kind of deal. So yeah, so that the so now they kind of grow these horns out of their heads, and uh, they have cool special abilities like the they they can take a part of their body. Uh, typically like a tooth or a, a fingernail they can hand it to to a companion or anyone and they they can communicate telepathically or they can see through that item um mm -hmm. and they can do that like uh once a day i think and then the, the whatever it is they got rid of they it, it grows back so that they can do it again and, and again and again yes it's really gross and i love it um, i love it and then uh of course we have the damn fear which Ooh. i will say we were right when we reviewed the yes. playtest version of it. Uh, they did that. change, <laughs> clarify the bite. They also moved the bite from any time to uh, as many times as your proficiency bonus a day, which, which I is think a is a genius way of doing this. I love, I love that exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then um, the last one was the reborn. I want to say, and it also, yeah, it also got more exciting. I like and that there are plenty more did. options here for the reborn. Uh, it's a, it's a solid mm -hmm. lineage now. Um, I also like yeah. how all of these allow you to basically play. If you want to be a dwarven reborn, that's totally cool. And there are choices and rules in here to mm -hmm. let you do that. So it's a, yeah. it's a, a smart yeah. one set. Of cool things. Yeah, one of the cool things, like uh, when I was building my Hexblood, I could have chosen to be a small character or a medium character. Mm -hmm. And right. that's and I think that's a ton of fun. Um, you yeah. know, like, oh, I was a gnome and I made a deal with a hag or I was a human and I made, you know, however yeah. it works. Or I'm just yeah. I'm just a Hexblood. That's you, you have that option as well, where right. you don't really have a, a other lineage than Hexblood. Mm -hmm. So it's very cool. Um, um, but the biggest part of this book is chapter three which is the domains yeah. of Ravenloft. And I, I this for mm -hmm. me is fantastic. This is the playground that I want, because like I said, I just want to head into one of these realms, like wonder, look around and be like, what the heck is going on here? Solve a couple problems and then, you know, head back home, get out of the mists and deal with my regular campaign. Um, but some of these these realms are really interesting and I would I would love like a longer campaign inside them. Mm -hmm. um, for example, one of them, uh, Darkon, is is one that kind of called to me this is a domain on the brink of destruction and basically it is this domain right this little kind of pocket horror dimension where um uh where a lich was imprisoned um azalin rex was was trapped in here and that darkness kind of suffused the entire realm and the lich broke free and got the heck out of here oh. and uh, went back to somewhere else. And now this place, Darkon, is suffused with evil. There are beings who are trying to rise up to fill up this like power vacuum. And there's also just this ongoing supernatural catastrophe because of the, the freedom that this lich found. Um, so, I mean, already, like thematically... I I want to play there. <laughs> I um I have a request, uh, Rich. Have you yes. seen the TV show Sliders, like in the nineties? Yes. Um, okay, so I would I would like you to yeah, run a D and D time. game that's kind of Sliders esque, where uh, you know we spend like one to three sessions in each of these, and we're going around trying to solve part of their problem. And like, yeah. you know, maybe that's just going to solve the entire multiverse problem. Uh, so I would like you Ooh. to go ahead and write that campaign and get on running it. Oh, gosh, darn. I was just planning a different campaign yesterday. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jerry O'Connell. That's who I was trying to remember. <laughs> um, let's see. I like that because actually this book would let you run that pretty well. Like usually there are, you know, in these, it details the domains. It talks about some possible adventures. It has some of the major villains who are there. Like in in here, um, who do we have here? We have uh, the Baron who believes that uh, mm -hmm. that they are the next inheritor of this entire place and will become the Dark Lord. And they're trying to gain power mm -hmm. throughout this whole process. I love it. Um, I would also head to Calicari. 
this one seems very based on on uh indian mythology um so mm -hmm. uh i just oh my gosh the pictures in here are fantastic um but it's a lot of uh of kind of like the i guess southern india is what it feels like a lot um uh, a lot of water uh a lot of well power battles that's what's going on this is a place of constant war um there are monstrous leaders there's family intrigues and the people who live here are just stuck like oh you're in charge now okay fine oh now it's you all right uh their loyalty is just they just don't have any because they can't um it seems like a very different place uh and in this one the leaders all feel alone and they feel angry about it i mean i just yeah it would be so good it would be so good <laughs> i would love to play here <laughs> yeah oh, and i and i agree dj who it's kind of an off-kilter version of quantum leap yeah yeah, yeah i think I that's mean, accurate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, accurate accurate yeah. um you know and in and in like all of these books you know and, and i have some of the art going here the i got the non-special edition because i only get the non-special editions right, um, right. i am a monster but i want match. all of my i want all my spines to match yeah. um i did not put put a lot of a lot of them in here but there are some really cool different things you can do like with survivors with your taruka deck um with uh there's some really cool monsters in here uh, oh my gosh they talk about things like <laughs> seances and like you know i'm gonna just pull this bad boy up right here you know it's boneless right here that's so good and then over here we got this brain in it the brain the classic brain in a jar you yeah. know it's gotta uh, have that. is it the amigo i don't know is that amigo <laughs> um yeah i i got to play actually um because my uh my uh academy groups they were kind of staggered a little bit and i wanted to hit them all at the same point so some of them were moving a little bit quicker and i decided to give them a very short encounter in this haunted forest um oh that's uh because i was like well you know no one will see you time travel here because it's haunted great okay and that seemed like an easy thing and then this book showed up and i was like okay all right we're gonna make it really haunted there's a creature in there called the yeah. relentless slasher and it's supposed to just be like jason freddy style you know um that monster is beautifully written to be like terrifying tear a party apart for two rounds and then the fight's over it's incredible like it's a design yeah. style that i really really like rather than a huge hit mm -hmm. point sponge um this creature is deadly and i totally recommend you checking it out and trying it on unsuspecting players yeah yeah um all right well uh are you ready to talk about your next little uh little bit of review goodness i am actually uh oh my gosh but i'm just still thinking about that book that book is so good oh um, well then i can go back to the book those are my top we, tips we, get we that talk book about if you like horror get, get that, that book, book. <laughs> all right yeah no i'm all ready. right are you ready here we go are you ready i, I mean we're already there uh we have there it is Oh, there speaking it is. of horror. Uh, <laughs> yeah, speaking of horror, uh, I got a chance to play The Shining, the Coded Chronicles game, uh, Escape from the Overlook Hotel by The Op Games. This game was, I, I'm really interested in escape room style games, uh, and this one in particular because I have specifically written puzzles for the Overlook Film Festival when they were at Timberline Lodge in Portland. And so oh, this, this game kind of called to me in a lot of ways. Um, it is wild. Um, we're going to see a couple of pictures in here, I think, but uh, but definitely I wanted to to just give you a, a rundown about how it looks, how it works. I, of course, I'm going to avoid any spoilers. Um, I will tell you right at the start, watch The Shining like right before you play this game. I think that'll that'll kind of get you in the mindset because it certainly drops you right in to the mayhem. Um, this game, uh, uh, which which version yeah. of The Shining? Because, you know, there's there's a sci fi like mini series version and with the guy from wings what? and then what there's which version the the <laughs> <laughs> then there's, there's then there's, there's that one. one there's that one with the guy who played the joker or something in some movie <laughs> and then there's oh it was it wasn't it like a book or something too i i feel like you are uh <laughs> huh. i feel like you're gonna have a fight on your hands in about a uh, 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> uh, this book was this this box is really cool opening it up i wasn't sure what to expect um so i'll tell you a little bit about the coded chronicles system that you're going to see um there are going to be some rooms you're going to have some like character standees to move you around a board and uh as well as some some constant you know clue cards and these these chronicles um the chronicles are basically a choose your own adventure style set of books um 
but the only way you get to choose one of the the things in here is by finding it on the board so you'll see like the there's a journal for wendy torrance here numbers are a thousand to you know 1999 um if i come up with a number through my actions in the game within that range I'm going to check out that entry in the corresponding book. Um, I've got two books here for Wendy, and I've got one for Danny, uh, you know, whose special ability mm -hmm. is the ability to shine and, uh, and see things here in the hotel that are pretty cool. Um, the way the game works. All right. You have your standee. Yes. This is wild. This was wild to me. How are you going to put all this together? Um, your standee has two abilities on it. Look and uh, for... Uh, for Wendy, use, you know, actually use objects. And for Danny, it is shine. Um, those actions come with numbers. Um, I think I want the next picture, maybe. <laughs> um, as, uh, as we're taking a look here, we'll see that basically the rooms on the board that you were moving around on, right? Here's our, here's our board, here's our, our items, here's some stuff. Um, there's different parts of the board that have three digit numbers on them. And depending on how you want to interact with them, uh, if Wendy looks, you put a one at the front. If Wendy uses, you put a two at the front. You know, if Danny oh. uses shine, you put a four at the front. And so you just get build these four digit numbers, look in the corresponding section and you find out what happens. The rules in there will tell you like, get some new cards, like draw card seven or, or move to this other section and read it or uh, open one of the many envelopes that come with the game. This game has 11 secret envelopes that will add new rules and add new things. There's a picture of the, the mechanic right there in action. That's that's Wendy using um, 101 from the uh, the kitchen, mm -hmm. which is right at the start of the game. So that's there's no spoilers there. You start in the kitchen. <laughs> um, I love this. Uh, it was so good because it meant that I had tons and tons of possible objects to use. If I want to use one of the items on something in the game, it tells you how to do that. It did mean I had to make keep track of a lot of numbers as the game played. Uh, and I would recommend if there are important things you want to remember, like important four digit numbers, write them down somewhere just so you can go back to them and look them up in the books when it comes down to it. This is a book that you can package right back up and uh, send to someone else. You can't play it again. You know the whole story, but uh, but you could give it to someone else. You just have to tape the envelopes down again. Um, but oh my gosh, I loved it. <laughs> so, and, and there's the envelopes. Um, so with this game, you, you said it would be good to watch uh, the the Shining beforehand. How yeah. How much does that knowledge really come to play in the game? I will say um, right at the start of the game, like I said, you're, you're kind of dropped in um, to to action, right? Stuff is happening because you got to do it. This is an escape game. We can't have a lot of prologue before yeah. that. You got to escape. Um, and so I, I found myself like as I sat down to play it because I did not watch the movie right beforehand, um, thinking about like, OK, where are we? What scene? OK, OK. All right. There we go. And okay. moving forward. Um, which I liked a lot. Uh, there are tons and tons of direct references. I mean, they turned the movie into a choose your own adventure game, basically. Um, that you're going to mm -hmm. do in kind of, you know, in many ways in the order that you want to, you're in, the investigation is kind of up to you. Uh, there's no linear path. I mean, there is, it's built in. Yeah. Like if I want to go and investigate the Colorado room, great. I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to look around. If I want to go look at the kitchen or the front office, I'm going to go in there. Um, at some point, one of those four digit numbers is going to make me do something, give me a puzzle to work on or something like that or an activity. And that's going to kind of push me forward. Uh, it was, oh my gosh, there were some moments where I was like, what am I supposed to do? Because I'm looking around and I didn't get the right number set up. <laughs> and so that was mm -hmm. a little frustrating, but once I got it, it was like, oh, perfect. Now we're moving. Um, there is a picture here and this, this is, there is, of course, there's a breaking through the door scene. Um, of course there is. <laughs> Um, uh, it was it was just a beautiful experience, and I liked it so much more than a lot of the escape room games that I have played. Um, a lot of the ones where you're okay. just flipping through a deck and tearing cards up and stuff like that, because the narrative is so strong. Which okay, you know, not okay, so in yeah, so so it's like big bonus. <laughs> it is, it is, yeah, and it so so just to kind of clarify, it's good to have seen the movie ahead of time, but not necessary. Like, not necessary. You right. could still have I a good not. time playing the game. <laughs> so say, you know, like like our guest Brian, he hates horror, so he's probably never seen this movie. And um, you know, cuz 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 he's a big scaredy pants. And uh, <laughs> so for him, he could still sit down and play this game. 
Right, right, right. Man, I, yeah, heard, I heard those knuckles crack from here across wow. the country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to referee the battle that is to come in this interview, just so you know, I'm walking away. <laughs> yeah, the, these uh, these books are are packed. There's tons of pages. There's tons of information. You were going to feel like you were watching the movie by by seeing all this. Um, and uh, and it's really cool because of that. It's really, really cool. Um, I recommend you check yeah. it out. There's also the Scooby-Doo game, which I also have, and I will be playing that one not solo, but I figured I would take this one on my own and enjoy this horror experience yeah. by myself. It was really fun. I, yeah. And I do, yeah. I do. Uh, uh, we were talking about your product photography uh, before the show, and I think you did a fantastic job. Like this specific image, I was like, that's mm. that's really solid. At first, I thought you stole it from the site or something, but then I was like, oh, no, oh, no. wait, I recognize some of those that's, games. Like, that's my squirrel. I recognize that glass squirrel. Holder. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, one. <laughs> <laughs> how many squirrel 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 magnifying glasses exist period i, I Two, don't know how many of them know. are yours all right uh, all right all of them all of them all of them now all, of them. <laughs> <laughs> all i have to do is find all one right, designer well, um yeah is there anything more that you wanted to chat about this game before Let's see. Uh, um I go see if our, our guest is still awake. <laughs> I will tell you uh, my my <laughs> other bit um, about this one. There is a pretty pretty rigorous hint system in here. Feel free to use it. Um, there is like a scoring uh -huh. system as well in the end because you know while you win, the deal is did you win good enough that Kubrick would be excited? You know, um, and mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of a cool addition. I do like it. Um, the more you ask for hints, like the 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 lower your score gets. That's the way most of these work. Um, but other than that, it, it was two acts. There is a an envelope to kind of save your progress and a restart if you want to play the second act another time. Uh, both of the acts take about ninety minutes to play. Um, doesn't matter how many players you have because it's not a two player game. Just because there's two standees, everyone at the table is free mm -hmm. to move those around. And the Scooby Doo game is going to have five standees, so you know doesn't matter how many nice. people you have awesome. you're all reading kind of one of the books at a time you know out loud so that process could take a little while um bring a magnifying glass it helped in this one i expect it'll help in the scooby-doo one um and uh and yeah i would say also on a puzzle note the puzzles okay. are not puzzles are not puzzle hard you know um you, you're not doing something that is outside your scope i'll tell you that right now um that would kind of get in the way of the cool narrative rush of playing this game so um, mm -hmm. Puzzles are manageable. And they, it, they're it, good. You're going to be able to handle this. And that's this, the Scooby Doo and the Shining are the same company. Asks uh, yeah. D20 Monkey in the chat. It, it is the next one in this <laughs> Coded Chronicles series, which I think is really cool. Awesome. Um, I think cool. it is the escape room style that I, I have been looking for in one of these boxes. I, I love a big narrative uh -huh. to keep it all moving together. And uh, yeah, I recommend it. Yeah, I'm not a huge uh, puzzle or escape room person, um, mm -hmm. but uh, this this is this is the kind of situation that I could see myself sitting down and going through this, even going through it by myself and playing that kind of game to kind of explore it a little bit more. Because yeah. I do admit, probably some of my trepidation towards puzzles, towards escape rooms, is that I've not really done very many, and when I've done them, they've just not been uh, my kind of experience. But uh, maybe I would get more out of this kind of situation. So Absolutely. I'm excited to try one of those out. I would also recommend, I mean, not not in the Coded Chronicles series, uh, Box One is one of the best escape room games I've ever played. Um, I think this okay. one is, is right up there. Um, yeah, they're both fun. I like them. All right. <laughs>